Laura Carson and welcome to the Halloween Carnival event. I have three video tutorials that will walk you through how to magically transform items like pipe bands, cake bands, tins, chipboard, foam core, wooden skewers, dowels, and tinker toys into a carnival. As part of the event, there are three giveaways and a challenge. I've also created 12 new carnival themed collage sheets and three digital file sets, all carried by Alpha Stamps. After watching each video, you'll want to download the companion PDF document, which contains pictures, supply lists, and step-by-step -step instructions. To participate in the event, you'll want to check out my blog for information on giveaways, challenges, and free images. Happy to have you along for the ride. The first thing I'm going to show you is the ticket booth. And the base of this ticket booth are cans. And the important thing about choosing cans is to find cans that are the same diameter. So you can see these are the same. And you want a smaller can for the top and a larger can for the bottom. The other consideration on the type of can or the size of can is what you're going to put inside the can. If you want something, somebody to be in the ticket booth, I used a skeleton. So you'll want to think about how deep is my can so that you can still see whoever you're going to have in your can. So um, this, I'll have, the, I'll have the measurements for you in the downloadable PDF document to tell you exactly uh, what I used for cans. Then the other thing you're going to want to do is um, most of this is going to be covered on the outside with paper and whatnot, but there are probably still edges that are going to show since the cans are going to be assembled like this. Um, it's kind of hard to cover the top of this with paper, so you, you might want to paint it and, and just paint around the edges anywhere you're, you think it might show the can itself. And then I also put a little bit of paper inside the can. You don't see it very well when you're looking at the booth, but just just to put a little bit of paper in the inside edges of the can to cover that up. And then I also painted the lip of this because when you look inside, you can kind of see the back lip of the can. So that's the important thing about the cans. Now in terms of the paint that I used, you're going to want to use something that works with metal. And I used the Ranger Patina, which is specifically made for metal. And there, I know there are other paints on the market that are made for metal. And another thing that I do sometimes is use stays on ink and I just use the re-inkers as just like a, like a paint or an ink and put it in a little plastic container and then use one of these foam sponges and then just you can go through and just apply the, the, the uh, stays on ink to the can like this with the pad. Now the next thing you need to do with your cans before you start assembling is you want to make this ledge that you see here on the front. And you do that by taking a can, doesn't matter which one, and using it as a template and draw a circle on a piece of lightweight chipboard. And then split this in half and cut one half out and that is your ledge. And it will look like this. You can see I've covered it with paper on both sides. I've inked the edges and I've added two of the tickets. All of the images that I used were from um, this the new collage sheets, um, the Halloween Carnival one, and it has all the images that I used here, plus some extra ones. Um, so I've got the tickets, and then I have also these little coins, just these little metal coins, tiny coins, and all that is, is uh, on top of the, the, the ledge that's going to go on the can. Now the next thing you're going to do is, on the back of this, you can see better, there's a piece of chipboard, lightweight chipboard here, and that's what's holding the two cans together. So what you're gonna do is cut out a piece of chipboard. Now, uh, mine is five by, by eight inches, and the measurement has to do with, it's going to fit on the back of the can like this, and then your other can's going to be on the top like this, and I figured out how much space I needed in between the cans so that you can still see the skeleton and he doesn't get his head cut off um, with the cans. And you can see a little bit better 
if you look here. And I also calculate the fact that I'd have this ticket sign hanging here. So that's, that's basically what you want to use as your measurement for your, um, for your piece of chipboard so that those two cans, it'll assemble those two cans and hold them together and you want enough space so that you can see inside your ticket booth. Then you're also going to want to cover your, your, um, your chipboard with, with uh, decorative paper and you can see I've covered one side, this will be the back completely. And on the inside, I didn't cover it all the way. This paper was too small to cover it. But you're not going to see everything inside because part of this is going to be actually on the can. So you're not going to you're not you're not going to see the bottom part. You're not going to see the top part. So it really didn't have to do that. And the other thing I like to do is ink everything. Um, I usually just go in with a stamp pad, ink all the edges, and then kind of pre-bend this so that it gets used to um, curling around your cans, and that'll help you get keep the cans in place. The next thing I do is actually um, apply glue to the cans where the chipboard's going to glue on, and I use E6000. And I apply it to the cans, and then I come in with rubber band. Do, whoops! Do the bottom first, and then I come in with a rubber band and hold this down with a rubber band until it dries. Now the chipboard that's covered in decorative paper has dried and the next step is to cover it in the front with this piece that I have from the collage sheet and it should, if you use the size can that I did, it should fit all the way around and I will give you the dimensions of this in the PDF document and then on the top you will put, um, or I put, this pediment piece that's also on the collage sheet and you're going to want to glue these down and put the rubber bands back on and you know make sure that they dry really tight um, so uh, the other thing I want to mention to you is anything that I am using to cover this that you're going to see the back end of and you can see from here on the pediment here on the top you can see that you're going to see the back of this and Anything that I do like that, I do cover the back with the decorative paper. At this point, everything is dry, and the next step, if you're going to put something inside here like the skeleton or one of the paper characters uh, or whatever it is that you want to use, um, you might want to go ahead and glue them in place or if you're going to put anything in the back here you might want to do all that now because as you start to add things it gets a little harder you know to work inside this hole um, so you might want to do that and then really it's up to decorating now because you've got your basic structure together um, if you look at this piece I'm gonna I think I'll prop it up so you can see it better put something under this while I talk about it. So um, the next thing I would do is just go ahead and add whatever you want. Like I added the clock to the top here and then I added the ticket sign to the top here. And then to dress up these edges I used, used some um, Dresden or German scrap just to go along those two edges. And then um, you can also glue your little ledge on right on top and you'll notice it hangs out a little bit because of the way um, the chipboard curves around the edges so you do get a little ledge. So you can glue that on and then on the top I also have, I'll turn this over a little bit, I have a spider web and a spider and that just comes from this uh, chipboard set of laser cut spiders and spider webs and stuff and y'all you'll see me use this stuff on some other things too so I just painted this and painted the spider and then glued that all on the edge and then you see I've made a couple of umbrellas that I have just kind of tucked right here in the corner edge right in there um, one of the umbrellas is made out of some of the steampunk spells paper and then it has a little uh, pumpkin bead on the top and the other is a spiderweb pattern. I will have this particular pattern for you to download off of the web my website um, if you want to make that umbrella. And then um, I also added, these are just beads stacked on top of each other and glued into place. 
and then I added a little, um, oh, this is just a little paper uh, bat, and it's on another collage sheet. I have a bunch of those. And then that's the basic, the basic structure and decor of the ticket booth. Now, you'll notice the base, and I did this for all the pieces. I created uh, bases for everything, and for a couple reasons, I think it just makes it look more interesting. And then it also makes it easy for you to pick this up and move it around or to put it away at the end of the season if you're going to put it away. So this is a piece of wood that I've painted with the purple paint and then I've got these flock pumpkins sitting here and then this is just foam core uh, that's covered with paper and then you see this band uh, and it's just a vintage Halloween poem around the edge. Um, and then you see the character here. Now the way I attach the characters to the base, and I'll just review it here and then you'll know that's the way I do it for all of them. But I basically cover the back with uh, heavy chipboard or heavy, uh, 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 heavy paper, heavy cardstock paper. Or if you wanted to, you could flip the image and then do the image on both sides. But with the way I'm going to have my carnival sitting, you won't really look behind everything. And then in between the two layers, I put a pin that I've, it's just a straight pin that I've cut off the head and I glue that in between and then that gives me something to stick into the foam core and which is why I do use foam core um, as a base because now I can stick these characters in them and have them stand anywhere that I want. I also uh, of course put a little coin in his hand and then I want to show you here if you can zoom in. Um, since he's a cat, his whiskers are on the collage sheet, which you really can't cut them out, but I lift them there in case somebody wants to do something with it digitally. But the way I add whiskers back is those are just uh, fake eyelashes. And they work really nice for cat whiskers or for tufts on owl's ears. And that's basically the ticket booth. I also think this would make a really cute um, uh, fortune teller booth. This is the structure of the, of the cans and all, so that might be something else really cute you want to put in your um, your carnival. Next I'm going to talk about the directory sign um, and I'll just walk you through the, the construction. Um, I think you, you can probably pretty much figure out how I did it. Um, I've got uh, spooky arms or creepy arms, hands and arms pointing uh, different directions with the names of different rides and games and things and these are all on the collage sheet as well as a couple of blank ones that way if you come up with other things that you want to uh, put a different name you can do that and then I've got some of the bats hanging off of those arms the center is a um, is just a wooden dowel and then at the top I have this owl which is just a brass owl I painted it black then I, paint, then I took uh, my finger and just burnished some red paint on it uh, so that it would pick up the highlights and then added these little cat eyes. These are the same eyes that I used in the apothecary project last year. So if you have some of those left over, um, you can use them on this. And then of course I painted the dowel and on the bottom here, um, I used something from the Tinker Toy set. Um, one of the supplies if you want to make the Ferris wheel is to have some Tinker Toys. And I thought as long as I have that set of Tinker Toys, I might as well go ahead and use some more of the pieces. So this is just the round piece that's right here. And then one of the things I did on this one, which I ended up kind of covering it up pretty much with these strips of words. And all these strips of words, I'll have these for you to download off of the website, um, is I filled it with wood filler. So if you just wanted to paint this thing and you didn't put anything around the edge, then you could just fill it with wood filler and then let it dry and sand it and it'll get rid of all those holes. Then the bottom is just a piece of wood that I found at Michael's Craft Store that's been painted and then I've got a little stack of pumpkins. I also have a character to go with this one so I will have a big base of, of uh, foam core and he will stick in that and look at the sign and of course he's backed with the black and then he's also got the pin at the bottom. Now one of the tricks I use when um, I do this is to edge, you know, usually when you cut things out, especially if you're going through thick things, you kind of get, can get a white edge. So I have a calligraphy pin that I use specifically for edging images like this, and they're too detailed to get like a rubber stamp or anything into it. So the fat end is what I use, 
and then I can just go along very easily on the edge of the image and just ink it up and get rid of the white lines. And with something like this that's really colorful, um, it makes it kind of pop. So I think that looks nicer than just leaving it with maybe a white edge. And if you've got a little raggedness, it can kind of cover that up as well. So that's just a little trick that I use. And that's the directory sign. Next I have an entryway sign for the carnival and I've got it laying down here so it's easy for me to point to all the pieces. We'll start with the bottom. I have two pieces of wood again that I got from the craft store and then I've painted them and edged them with uh, more of the wording and again that'll be on the blog for you to download. You can't see the tops but it's covered in paper and then uh, to, to anchor the whole thing I've used these wooden spools, painted them with like a copper color paint and then covered them in paper and then to, uh, I glued the um, and it was of course it was a long one I glued the uh, wooden dowel inside the spool and then to cover up the hole in the excess area I use these little pumpkin pods and they are the seed pods they they're seed pods but they look like pumpkins and Alpha Stamps of course is carrying all this for me and then um, I, of course the wooden dowels I painted those with the red like I said glued that in there and then covered everything up and then you see at the bottom at the top I have two plastic skeletons the same kind of skeleton you saw in the ticket booth and then I've used the same cat eyes and then spooky wings from my spooky wings collage sheet then up at the top you can see I've got various paper lanterns and they're on a different collage sheet than where the uh, sign is and I'll show that to you later and then to hang and spend all this, I used um, Mardi Gras beads, which are great for a couple reasons. One, they're very inexpensive, and two, they're already strung together with string. So it's very easy, I don't know if you can see this detail, but it's very easy to just put a jump ring on here that's a little bit smaller than the bead, and then whatever you ha hang on this will stay in place. And then I used the same thing to attach um, the ends of the beads to the top of the wooden dowel. And the way I did that was after I painted the dowel, I used an awl to go in and kind of pre-poke a hole at the end. And then I took a, um, a straight pin, and you can use whatever, or stick pin, you can use whatever you want and just clipped it off because it would be hard to stick a long stick pin inside here. And that way it's got a hole for it that I can stick it in there. So then I added a little jump ring on the end of this. I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of dark. So now I can put the stick pin through the jump ring and then stick that in the hole and I put some glue in it and now it holds it in place. So that's just such a really simple way to string anything you want um, between skewers. And then of course I also use chain and that also gave me a place to stick the um, the skeleton on the top. So that is the entryway sign. Next I have a little booth called Pumpkin Pets Guaranteed to Bite. Um, now the base of this piece is made out of just a round craft box and um, I, these come from Alpha Stamps that I used and there are three different sizes so I believe this is the middle size. Um, so all I did is it's empty underneath I just covered it with paper on the outside and then the top now the umbrella um, I made with various papers from the steampunk spells uh, paper pack collection and I have a separate video if you haven't seen it already on how to make paper umbrella so I'm not going to include any of that in this set of tutorials but I'll just give you the link so that you can check it out um, in the separate video tutorial on how to do this and then um, I in, added all these pumpkins that came from this sheet and the way I did this is to make them stand up is I back them with something in this case I backed them with decorative paper and for this example I'll just show you it's just cardstock and then I put a piece of double stick foam tape on the back and that just gives me a little edge that I can use to glue that down on the top of this so just a little bitty piece, it's just right there on the edge. It doesn't matter if it shows a little bit because by the time you put the moss on, you won't see anything. 
So I put all of the pumpkins on there, and then once I got those glued on and standing up, then I came in with some moss and filled in the spaces in between. Now the moss comes this color, it comes in big sheets. It's kind of brownish on this side and then green on this side, but I wanted more of a fall Halloween look. So the way I did that is I mixed together a little bit of caramel alcohol ink and I used um, just regular alcohol because it's cheaper than using uh, alcohol blending solution. <clears throat> and I just created a little solution in the cup and just picked apart pieces of the of the moss and dropped them in here to dye them. And you make up a little solution, it can dye a lot of these. And then uh, once it dries, if it's not dark enough, you can just spray a little bit more of the alcohol ink directly on it. Or you know, you might want some that's got a little bit of green but brown too. So you can see the difference between what it looks like now after I dyed it and before. And so then I went in and stuck little pieces in between the pumpkins and then that of course covered up the, the uh, double stick tape on the back. So you don't see that anymore. And it just kind of looks cute with the pumpkin sitting in the grass. So that's pumpkin pets. The next piece I'm going to talk about is the boobash. I figured that a carnival needed some kind of entertainment, and so the entertainment for the haunted carnival is the Grumpy Pumpkin Trio, who are, their stage is this paper mache pumpkin. But before I talk about how um, I did this, I'm going to talk about a smaller component, which is a bench. And you'll see I'll have a lot of different benches um, throughout the carnival. and. To make a bench, it's super simple. In this case, I just used two pieces of chipboard. Uh, they're covered with decorative paper. I put some of the pumpkins from one of the collage sheets on the back, and then the sides are these scrolls, and they come in a package, and they're multiples of each, of each design, but they're really handy for armrests or the, or the sides of benches, so I use those. And then the feet, you can see here, are these little wooden pieces and I used four of those for underneath the bench. And I'll have some other benches to show you that made out a little bit differently, but it's just really a simple thing to do to make a little bench. Now let me talk about the actual pumpkin here. This is made from a paper mache pumpkin. These things are really cute. And the first thing that I did was cut a section out of the pumpkin. So I basically cut three of the sections, I guess you would call them, out of the pumpkin. And you can see inside of the paper mache it's newspaper. And uh, a couple of things that you'll probably need to do, I used a box cutter to do this. And you might want to come in with a little glue because some of it's loose once you cut it open and glue anything down and then you also might want to come in with some sandpaper and just get your edges smoother and then once you do all that prep work then you're ready to paint. Now what I did for paint is I first painted the pumpkin with orange paint and I actually mixed a little bit of black paint in the orange so it wasn't quite so bright and I painted the, um, the outside of the pumpkin, and then I dry brushed on a couple of different uh, colors of green, a darker one and a lighter one, just to give it more interest, uh, so it's not just yellow but or orange, but also green. And then one of the greens, I actually painted inside the pumpkin, and so you can see that's the interior. So once I got everything painted, then I started to work on the inside. So you've got the three grumpy pumpkins in there, and the way I mounted them is, again, I used this little piece like I used for the bench, and I painted it black. And then, just like in the last one where I talked about uh, the, the pet, the pumpkin pets, um, in order to get the pumpkins to stand on this little bitty thing, I put a little bit of the foam core tape on it, and that allowed me to glue that on the wooden piece. Then once I got the three pumpkins done, then I could glue this inside the, um, the paper mache pumpkin. Now you'll also notice that there is a row of lanterns hanging in the back. And the way I achieved that, I think <clears throat> perhaps maybe you can also see that there's a piece of foam core 
inside there that the lanterns are hanging from. So what I did was I just cut a piece of foam core like this and then I put a uh, eye pin in between the picture of the lantern and the back. So this eye pin is right in here. And then I hooked it to a piece of chain and then I poked everything through the foam core and then with the with the lantern hanging and then snip this and then close the end with a loop to make it stay in place. And then this whole thing got glued up inside the pumpkin. So unless you tilt the pumpkin back, you really cannot see that foam core piece. And then that allows you to have the, the lanterns hanging in the back of the of the um, the grumpy pumpkin trio. And then I just added other decorative elements. Um, I put some of the grass, the, the stuff that I showed you before with the uh, pumpkin pets. Uh, since everything was painted with this bright green, I went ahead and just used the bright, bright green grass and put that in there just to kind of cover everything up and to make it, uh, I figured the pumpkins would be sitting in a, in a bed of grass. And then I had some, this velvet ivy was in my stash, so I used that. And then of course added the signage, uh, the grumpy pumpkin trio and the boob ash on the top of the pumpkin. Now the base of the pumpkin, I decided that I wanted it to sit up a little bit higher and that way it would be easy to for, be easier for you to be able to look into the pumpkin. I just used a tin can and I covered the can with paper, decorative paper first, and then I did this uh, tool, orange tool uh, ribbon, and then this black pleated ribbon, and then this little braid on top of that. So it kind of made a little skirt around the tin. So looking for a tin, you just, you know, you want something that fits with the pumpkin. I imagine it could be a little bit bigger if you like it that way, but um, that's really all you have to do in terms of a tin. And so that finished the whole, um, the pumpkin piece. Next I'm gonna talk about the little scene. Um, what we have here is two uh, layers of foam core, the larger one and the smaller one. And then you can also see that I have wooden skewers here that are holding lanterns and pumpkins at the top. And then to hold the skewers into place, I have these little spools. The skewer goes through the spool, the little pointy end, and that sticks into the foam core and is glued in. And I used the little, um, the little thing here, spool, so that it would give me more surface area to glue. Now the other thing I ended up having to do is because of the tension at the top where the pumpkins and the lanterns are, I ended up putting another skewer in between just to keep them from going together. Now the one thing that I would do differently if I were to make this again is instead of using the chain, I would, um, I would do what I did in the very first, uh, the, the entrance sign that I showed you where I used um, some of the Mardi Gras beads and a pin that would go in the top and I would connect them like that instead of using the chain because that was a lot harder to work with. And the Mardi Gras bees come in every kind of color so there are a lot of, lot of options. So I would have used that instead and that would have made it a little bit easier to do. Um, you can see I also have some grass and stuff. And then in the front I have these masonite trees which I have uh, added some glitter in different places to make them, give them a little bit more dimension and a little little bit shiny, a uh, little sparkle. And of course I've got characters stuck into the foam core with the pins and the flocked pumpkins. And then I have a couple of these uh, raven beads sticking on the, sitting there on the pumpkins. And then the, the boo thing, the, the actual scene, if I can do this without making a mess, fits down in here. And then I put the bench over on this side and there you have the complete boobash scene. Next we have the trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat concession stand. I figure you needed some food at the carnival. And so I'm going to show you how I made this little stand. I started with a box, a craft box is the base, and you can use the bottom or the top, whichever you like. And then I made, actually I think I used the top. Then I cut um, pieces of 
foam core, the first layer to fit inside the box, and then the next layers progressively um, shorter to create the ledges. And you know, you can do it however much you want, however many ledges you want, uh, maybe think about what you're going to actually put on them. Um, and you can build it up as high as you like as long as you don't run out of room. And I did each, each step up, I did it double wide. Um, and the reason is, at, is that the, <clears throat> these little borders that you see up here, they fit really nicely on a double stack of foam core. And I'm going to have these borders, just like all the other borders you've seen, for you to download on the web. And then once I got this all put together and I covered the, the each layer of foam core with paper before I glued it to the next, that made, it seemed to make it easier. And then I glued the borders around it. Then at the bottom where the box is, I used this band that's on the collage sheet here. I used that and it hangs down a little bit further than the box. And then the, the, um, the wheels on the bottom are some that I had in my stash. Um, if I can figure out where I got them, I will give you the link. Um, but you know, any, any kind of wheels you have would work. And because this skirt hangs further down than the actual box, I ended up building just a, a, a putting together a couple of layers of foam core so that I could connect the wheels to the foam core and I covered that foam core with uh, paper even though you can't really see it but I usually just cover everything with paper so uh, that way I could attach the wheels and then of course at the top here is an umbrella and uh, it's just like the other umbrellas I'll give you the link to the tutorial if you haven't already seen it uh, the video tutorial that shows you how to make these umbrellas and then I've trimmed it here on the top with some uh, fabric and then it's on a skewer which sticks all the way down through all the layers of foam core and then the sign is glued to the top of the skewer which actually comes through the top of the umbrella. <clears throat> now on the cart you see all kinds of treats. You have heebie-jeebies and witch's brew and coffin candy, rotten apples and um, spiders on a stick. And I'll just tilt this up a little bit so you can see all that better. And with this all being foam core, it makes it easy for you to stick some of these things through the foam core. And of course, it's easy to glue it on the top. And I'll talk about how I made each one of those. At the very bottom, the heebie-jeebies, and I will just kind of put something behind this, a couple of these things behind this, see if I can prop this up. The heebie-jeebies are these little beads. They're the same beads you saw in the ticket booth. And... I, I kind of thought of them as like, a, like, a, like in a cone. And so what I did was I cut a circle just out of paper and then cut a little wedge. It looks like a Pac-Man. And I just eyeballed it. I mean, I, I drew the circle with the template, but the cut, I just eyeballed it. And then all I did was fold it around and glue it together. And if it's, not, if it's too small, then you can just cut more out of the wedge. Um, and then I glued that into this little brass foot or, or bead, um, little bead thing, and I just glued it in there because it would be hard. You could poke a hole with this and um, glue it in, but I thought it looked better just to glue it into this little thing, and then the base of that could glue on top of the shelf. And then, of course, the bead, the goofy-looking bead goes in there. And the Witch's Brew are just bottles, little bottles, that I painted with... Um, caramel alcohol ink and then the collage sheet has the witch's brew labels. Now the coffin candy is, you can see it there and then I also have the character, the characters holding a coffin candy in his hand and of course he'll, he'll get stuck into the foam core. And so I just painted a round toothpick and then I used the this uh, spiderweb stuff that you can buy in all the craft stores. And I just took a piece of that, I put a little bit of glue on this just to kind of help get it started, but the, you know if you've ever worked with this stuff it likes to stick to itself. And then I just started wrapping until I got it as thick as I wanted it. And then the little spiders that you see, those were just some stickers that I had in my stash. They were the perfect size, they were nice and small. And then you just kind of play with it until it wants to stick to itself or cut off what you don't want. 
and bunch it up and you know you've got your you've got your coffin candy and then the rotten apples there on the collage sheet and I put a pin in them just like I do with the characters so that they could stick inside there and then the spiders are these masonite witch wands which I thought worked really well for um, for the spiders on a stick and they come with a set of six and I just painted them and then painted a little um, black widow diamond on on the actual uh, on the masonite after I painted it black and then just poked them into the foam core so that's how I made the actual cart now you know you don't have to do wheels if you don't want to you can put it on something like these candle stands you know you can have it sitting on a stand instead of wheels or you can use a bigger box and just it the whole thing is a box and there's no wheels or anything like that so you know there's lots of different things you can do with the cart and then I have the sign to go with it um, I have a uh, one of the plastic cauldrons which I have colored with copper gilders paste and then I have more of the spider web stuff just coming out of it as if it's foaming and I put a piece of um, a piece of uh, foam core down on the bottom and glued it in place with E6000 to give me something to stick the skewer into and give it more support and I also glued everything to the back this handle here too so that also helps support it and of course you get the sign the treats are five cents the tricks are free and there's all the odds and ends for sale and then I have this this is just a witch's glass bead at the top so that's trick-or-treat on to video two which covers carnival games